All right, look, I'm going to start this off straight to the point. If you hadn't seen Dragon Ball Super Broly, the movie, first of all, you late. But second of all, you already know not to click on this video. We shouldn't be having this discussion. Go ahead and click off because, yes, I am going to have spoilers in here in case you don't know. Now let's get into it. Now, like I said, this is straight to the point. Really, the only reason I'm making this video is because everybody has been asking me my opinion on the movie because they know how I am about Dragon Ball Super. First off, I wasn't all that big on Dragon Ball Super, in case you guys didn't know. It had some great arcs. Honestly, I think it had much more potential than it showed. Tournament of Power was in, in, in my opinion, but... Going back and watching Dragon Ball Z, it's just like Dragon Ball Super never gave me that that same nostalgia. I just did not feel it when it returned. Now, there were arcs I was hype about, but I just wasn't feeling it. So that leads me to this movie, Dragon Ball Super Broly. This movie was sick, and I'm sure you guys already know that, so I'm not even going to elaborate. I'm just going to say a few quick things and then I'll get into the things that I didn't really like about the movie. First things first, transformations. This is how Dragon Ball is supposed to feel in terms of transformations. In Super, it's just like, ha, huh, I'm Super Saiyan Blue now. But in this movie, every single transformation, every single power up, all of that was phenomenal. The art directors, the people who animated this movie... 15,000 out of 10. It it was over 9,000. You guys get the joke. It, that, it was sick. Like, just great. Art and animation in this movie, just great. Now, the fight with Broly and Goku was kind of, eh, it was looking a little bit like Ruby. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it was looked, looked a little video game-ish, but it was cool. I was digging it. The fights were so sick that it didn't really take me out of the movie too much. But I'm going to start from the beginning and work my way towards the end. Now, I would say probably the first 15 to 20 minutes flowed very smoothly. I honestly think that every transition was perfectly executed until it got to Bardock. And I mean, I'm talking all the way from Frieza showing up and taking over planet Vegeta, Vegeta's father sending Broly out to planet Vampos and Perry is going to get him. All of that was very, very, very well done. Honestly, I enjoyed that. I really think it was animated very well, and it really gave a great storyline and introduction to this new Broly that Akira Toriyama decided to, I guess you can say, change him to. It was really very well done, and that I can't say enough. I know a lot of people don't like the old Broly, so Toriyama giving him this different story definitely added depth to the character. Personally, I still like the old Broly more. I'll get into that a little bit later, but um, yeah, the very beginning, very well executed. Now, when it got to Bardock arriving, that was when the movie kind of took a turn for me. You could tell that so much was chopped out because it was literally Bardock arrived. He's thinking that Freeze is going to destroy the planet, and I mean, that's what it Pretty much was happening. Frieza did call all the Saiyans back, but it didn't give us enough time for Bardock. And the main reason I know a lot was cut out or it was just bad writing, which I don't think it was, is when Frieza decided to blow up the planet. And you see Bardock had just sent off Goku. Goku was going to Earth and Bardock was with Jine the last time we saw him when the space pod left off. Next thing we see Frieza blowing up the planet and we see Bardock trying to stop the blast completely torn apart, battle scarred. He's still in his damaged clothing. So that means at some point, Bardock got into a fight, but we didn't see him fight Frieza. We didn't see him fight any of Frieza's minions. No one, no Zarbon, no Dodoria. So it was like, where did he get beaten up at? That's what really caught me the most. Now, normally I won't mind when stuff is cut out of a movie, as long as it makes sense, don't get me wrong, I always, 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 always love to see the scenes that were cut out. But I mean, if the movie flowed very well, then I'm not all that bothered by it. But just that part that was chopped out, all of those parts between Bardock leading up to Frieza destroying the planet, I really just want to see what happened from that point. Like, 
what the heck was cut out? Were there several Saiyans annihilated by Frieza's soldiers before he blew up the planet? What happened at that point? And I mean, a lot of people probably just like, eh, they did that just to, you know, kind of pay homage to the old Bardock when he tried to stop the blast. But if that's the case, why show in Battle Scar? You know, that's just me. And like I said, if that's the case, I really think it was bad writing, but I don't. Honestly, I'm pretty sure it was just some scenes that were cut out. Next up, Frieza's plan with the Dragon Balls and his overall plan in the movie. Frieza. We all know Frieza is a tyrant, a killing machine, a guy who just does not care about life at all unless it's his own. Honestly, Frieza has backstabbed his own people. It, probably his father, if he wanted to, he would have killed King Cold. I honestly think this dude just doesn't care about anyone. So seeing Frieza in this movie was kind of... I don't know. I liked it and I didn't like it. And what I didn't like was the part where he wanted to gather the Dragon Balls and make the wish to be five centimeters taller. Like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Really? Like, Toriyama originally drew Frieza small and simple because he wanted to show that he could be more dangerous than he looked. That's the reason Frieza's final form was so simple, because that's what Toriyama was going for. Small, simple, but dangerous. So seeing him want to make this wish about growing five centimeters was kind of eh. And I mean, Frieza still has those scumbag ways, but it's just not the Frieza from Z. You know, ever since Frieza's been brought back, I ain't really care for it. Like, I'm just, I'm going to be honest. Like, ever since he came back in Resurrection F, I was just like... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's Frieza, but like, it's not the Frieza that we saw when he was wrecking everybody on Namek. And it was like, how are we going to stop this guy? That is Frieza to me. In this movie, we just kind of got, I mean, it's Frieza, of course, but it just wasn't what I wanted to see for him. And honestly, I feel like he was brought back for the purpose of introducing Broly only. And when I say that, it kind of means, or it kind of feels like Frieza didn't really have a purpose, you know? His purpose was to bring Broly to Earth to fight Goku and Vegeta. And it feels like that's all he's there for the entire movie. Like, the rest is just comedy. I mean, if you look at it, like, it's just not... Of course, the beginning, seeing him destroy the Saiyans, it was like, oh, yeah, there, there's Frieza. That's what I'm talking about. But after that, it was just like... You serve this one purpose. And that's just how I feel. Don't get me wrong. It was great. Everything was written great. I just feel like Frieza needed much more of a purpose in this movie. And I wish he felt like the tyrant that he felt like when he was killing people in Z. That is the Frieza that I grew up loving. And I really just hope they don't continue to downplay his character as more of this comedic villain who just can get beat up by Goku and Vegeta anytime they want to do it. Now on to Broly. The story of Broly was phenomenal, not even going to lie. I really love the backstory that they gave Broly, but I was saying this the moment that I saw that the villain was Broly. I wish they just would have done a different Saiyan and gave him that legendary Super Saiyan backstory. Like, of course, they did it with Kale in Z. Vegeta was like, ah, oh, she must be the legendary Super Saiyan. I wish they would have just gave it to someone else because technically Broly, Broly was never canon. So making him canon kind of destroys what we all knew growing up, which was the old Broly. Now, I know what everyone's thinking. Yeah, his backstory was trash. Yeah, but there was a lot of stuff that was trash about old Dragon Ball Z movies. I'm not going to get into all that, but... Some of the stuff was trash. I'm just going to be honest. The movies were always great to watch in terms of action, but the stories weren't the best. Janimba's story was boring as hell. It was only lit to me when they started fighting Janimba, Goku and Vegeta. And I mean, there's several movies like that. So just to tarnish Broly because of his backstory is dumb. Now, I mean, we all know Bob Broly, that one don't exist, but Broly's Second Coming, I love that movie, man. I don't care what anyone says. And even the first one, just after Broly came in and just started destroying stuff, we saw that the legendary Super Saiyan was a monster. Like, this dude cared nothing about anything other than destruction. 
And that's typically what most Saiyans were anyway. They were born to be fighters, warriors, whatever you want to call them. They were born to, well, I'm not going to say they were born to, but take over planets and sell them. That's what they do. So getting this Broly, who of course has this different backstory now, who doesn't have the heart or the complete mindset of a Saiyan, it's kind of like you are destroying what a lot of us used to love. And I mean, if this doesn't bother you, then of course that's you. But I love Broly as a villain. The old Broly who wrecked Goku, Piccolo, Trunks, had Vegeta scared everybody. That's the Broly that I love. And I want to talk about why this Broly didn't give me the same feel that that Broly did. Now, I did love this version of Broly. So as I'm getting into this, don't get it twisted. I love this version of Broly, honestly. But this movie, honestly, just like all the past few Dragon Ball films, and I'm talking from Beerus, Frieza, up until now, those, none, none of the old ones. I'm talking about all the Dragon, the more Dragon Ball Super films is what I'm talking about. None of the enemies feel like a threat. And I don't know if it's because Goku and Vegeta have just become so powerful that the enemies just typically feel like nothing now. But even in Dragon Ball Super, to me, no one other than maybe Black Goku really felt like a threat. Like, and maybe it's just me, but if you watch Dragon Ball Super, the um, first one with Beerus, yeah, Beerus was a destroyer god. He wanted to destroy Earth. But if you feed him right, okay, I I'll spare this planet. Nothing about Beerus felt like a threat at all. Not like when Harutagarn was coming. Not like when Janimba was coming. Not like when, I don't know, even Garlic Jr. Just those type of enemies. Um, wh What was his name? Lord Slug. All of those guys. And I'm talking all the way back. And if you want to bring in Z... The Saiyans, Frieza, um, Cell, Majin Buu, like the new stuff just doesn't feel like the enemies are a threat. And when I say that, I mean like, yeah, Broly came in and it was like, yeah, this kid's dangerous, but he didn't feel like, honestly, what would have happened if Broly would have killed Goku and Vegeta? Frieza would have blew up the planet, of course, after taking the Dragon Balls and making a wish. That's what would have happened. Frieza would have been the threat. But Frieza didn't even feel like a threat in this movie. And it was just like, part of it, I believe, was because Broly, they made Broly out to be this threat. And he wasn't. If you watch it and just pay attention, I didn't notice this until the second time I watched the movie. Or actually, I'll say the third time I watched the movie. Broly is a punching bag 90% of the movie. Now, I know some people are going to be like, yeah, but he was raising his power the entire movie. He was taking on the power of the legendary ape, even though he was in his normal form. He had lost control. He was doing damage. He was destroying the land and all that. Yes, that is true. But if you look at it, we're going to break down all three or four, however many it was, of Broly's fights. Broly versus Vegeta. Broly got his ass wrecked. Vegeta is my dude. Vegeta tore Broly apart from base form all the way to Super Saiyan God. Broly landed probably about two blows on Vegeta, and that was about it. And the only reason Vegeta continued to transform was because we saw that Broly was getting stronger, and that was it. But another thing that happened, Vegeta's fight was just cut short, which was so weird. It was just like, they were about to attack each other again, and then Goku decides, no, it's my turn. And he just takes over. First of all, Vegeta doesn't even allow that. Vegeta is not going to let anyone step into his fight until he loses, period. So why that happened, I'm not really sure. Don't get me wrong. Seeing Goku do the entrance that he did, like that we saw in that trailer, what, a year ago? That was sick, man. I was um, not even going to lie. I was hyped seeing that. But Goku's fight with Broly... Goku had that fight under control until Broly hit a power up and it was after Goku went Super Saiyan God. Yeah, Broly started pounding Goku, but it probably only lasted about a minute and a half. 
And in an hour and 30 minute movie or however long the movie was, I think it was almost two hours. I don't know. But however long this movie was, that is not that long for the good guys to get wrecked. So, I mean, after that, Goku went to Super Saiyan Blue and even Freeze and Paragus said, yeah, this is this is going to be it. So Goku going Super Saiyan Blue was enough to beat Broly max powered out. And, of course, that's when Frieza decided to do his little scumbag crap and kill Paragus. Now, <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. It was funny to me. I know some people are saying it was sad. Some people were upset about it. But I ain't going to lie. It was funny because that part where he said, oh, look, it's a tragedy. I think I was the only person in the theater laughing. I was laughing my ass off. But at that point, yeah, Broly powered up and it was like, Dude became a beast. I guess that was his legendary Super Saiyan form. And so he starts wrecking Goku, but we don't really see much of it. And it's like, before we know it, Vegeta comes in and they're like, yeah, let's go Super Saiyan Blue and try to take him out. Broly just starts spraying an array of energy blasts. We don't even see Goku and Vegeta really try anything other than Kamehameha and Gallic Gun. And even then it doesn't do anything. And before we know it, Goku and Vegeta toss Broly to Frieza, and then they go and see Piccolo so that they can learn the fusion dance. Now, seeing Frieza get pounded for an hour was definitely satisfying. Not even gonna lie. I enjoyed that probably more than anything else in this movie because he deserved it. But at that point, we see Goku and Vegeta trying the fusion dance. Of course, they failed twice. I knew they were gonna do that. They make both of these terrible versions of Gogeta. And then finally, we get my boy... Go, Gito. Ah, oh, moment of silence. People always ask me why I like Gogeta more than Vegito, and the answer is simple. Gogeta gets shit done. Two fights, and he has won both of them. Vegito did not defeat his enemies. Gogeta beat both of them, and that's exactly why I like him. He comes in, powers up, gets things taken care of. And that's exactly what he did in this movie. But the only thing I did not like about Gogeta in this movie, well, I'm not gonna say Gogeta, Gogeta versus Broly. Broly didn't feel like a threat anymore. After Gogeta came in, the movie was a done deal. And it was pretty much the same thing with Janimba. But the only thing was we got to see Goku and Vegeta have a long drawn out fight with Janimba before Gogeta came in and just finalized things. We didn't really get much of Broly winning in this movie. And it was like, he was hyped up to be this amazing, powerful, destructive villain. And I'm, no, I'm not gonna say villain, well, I'll say antagonist. He was the antagonist of the movie. And it was just like Broly got his ass kicked the whole movie. And by the end of it, it's like you feel bad for Broly. I did. I don't know about you guys, but I, I felt bad. Broly was going to die. Gogeta was going to kill him. And honestly, I think that was the Vegeta side of Gogeta taking over because Goku didn't want to kill him. But at the beginning, you can see when Vegeta goes Super Saiyan God, I believe it's Big Bang Attack that he does in that form. Goku says, no, don't do it. And Vegeta just is like, I'm done. And blast this guy into the ocean. And I'm like, ah, oh, come on, Vegeta. You got to chill, bro. Chill out. And that's what we see. And if it wasn't for a Chilai, Chirai, whatever you want to call her, Broly would have died. And what made it so sad was that right when the final Kamehameha was coming at him, you see him coming back into sanity after he's taken all these extremely devastating blows from Gogeta. And I was just like, man, like... Broly wasn't a villain, so I didn't want to see him really get beat like one. It was, it was bad to me. Just Broly watching him get beat the way he was, I felt bad. I don't know about you guys, but that was me. Just like Broly was honestly my favorite character of this film. Gogeta coming in second place, Vegeta coming in third. Easy third with how badass he was. It's just the movie was great. The structure was great. The, the writing was great. And I just, the only thing that got me was that it just didn't feel like Broly was a villain and certain parts felt rushed, especially, especially, especially towards the end. Now, the reason I didn't break down the fights in detail was simply because they're amazing. I mean, we, we all know that. If you've seen the movie, you already know the fights 
were great. The end, though, just with... I don't know if you guys noticed, but in this movie, you don't really get a whole lot of Goku and Vegeta until it's about time for them to fight or go look for the Dragon Balls. This is a Broly movie, and that's that's what it is. It's about Broly. It's about Frieza. It's about the Saiyans. And, I mean, you get Saiyans the whole movie, but Broly is the main focus. So once it got to the end, the fight with Gogeta, that fight didn't feel rushed. I'm not going to lie. That fight did not feel rushed. Goku and Vegeta's fights felt a little bit rushed. I'm not going to lie. Frieza's fight, I really wish they would have got a little bit more in depth with it. I wish we would have got to see a little bit more of Whis versus Broly as well. That would have been sick just to see. I mean, of course, we all know Whis is almighty, all powerful. This dude's freaking God. I don't care what anyone says. But I just wish we would have got a little bit more of that. But then that ending where they whisked Broly to another planet to save him. I really don't understand why they whisked him there. Because that's where he grew up having this tragic life where he didn't learn anything. Why not wish him elsewhere? Why not just wish that he was somewhere else where they could just talk I, I don't know i don't understand why they would wish him back to that planet just because of all that he went through there with his father and family and just even the the creature that he was so attached to so like i don't know that was just me but at the end like i said uh, they wish broly away goku comes in and he says hey i just want to train with you ever so often and it's kind of like they set broly up to eventually become a good guy so, um, I mean, the movie itself was great. I've already said that. The movie was great. Just so much felt rushed. And that was the only thing that I didn't really care for about it. So I really, really hope they release a director's cut. I guess that's what it's going to be. Or extended cut. Whatever you want to call it. With everything that was cut out. Because I really want to see more. I hope there's more fights. I really want... The Goku and Vegeta fights to be elaborated a little bit more because they just they flew by. And I mean, other than that, it was great. I wish that we didn't get or I mean, I wish we did get some of the other characters that weren't in the movies, the Gohans, the Yamchas, the Tians, the Krillin. You know, I mean, it's just this was a full fledged Saiyan movie and I wish we would have got a little bit more with it. But overall, I really did enjoy the movie and I'm pretty sure all of you guys did as well. Now, this is one more thing I got to say, and this is just for the debaters out there. Who's stronger, Broly or Jiren? Come on, y'all. It, it does not take rocket science. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Anyway, that's my review of the Broly movie. I'm um, not sure if you guys are going to be able to tell, but the sound quality is going to be a little bit different. My mic's not working right now. I actually got another one coming in. So, yeah, my sound quality is going to be a little bit different than usual. But still, I hope you guys enjoy this review. It came out much longer than I planned for it to be. And I don't even know when I'm going to upload it. But, um, yeah, that being said, like I said, hope you guys enjoy this review. If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that always helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I believe this is my first video of 2019. So, definitely give me a thumbs up because I have been slacking off. So, yeah, that being said i will talk to you guys later follow me on everything you see listed in the description below for more animated heroes out peace